Okay, so this is pretty much a continuation on a video that I did about a month ago, 2010 Pokemon interview predicts Pokemon Sun and Moon's easy story. So I've been kind of going through the history of Pokemon. I feel that the past is actually very telling of the present right now and why the 5th, 6th, and 7th generation Pokemon games have been fairly underwhelming. Now, don't get me wrong. I, like, whenever I make a video about this, people are like, oh, you hate Game Freak. Why are you against this? Why are you against that? Don't get me wrong. I absolutely loved the 7th generation and the 6th generation was pretty awesome as well. It's just that the games weren't that great. So when it comes to Pokemon right now, Game Freak, they have the identity down. They know how to sell us a Pokemon experience, the idea, the generation, but when it comes to portraying that inside of a game, I'm, I just haven't been feeling it, and these interviews are very telling, just kind of talking about intentionally making the games easier and more accessible to kind of compete with the smartphone mobile market, and also just the cultural shift. That Game Freak acknowledges that kids these days, they have less attention span, they just don't want to kind of focus on a game as much, and there's so much else going on that they want an easier, more handled experience, and that even goes from the fifth generation into the sixth generation with Pokemon Omega Green Alpha Sapphire and maybe one of the strangest decisions that I ever heard. So I found this interview while doing research for the last video and it kind of boggled my mind. I feel like I heard about this at some point but I didn't really care about covering it but now it's very telling. After the performance of what happened with Pokemon Sun and Moon, it's very strange to think that Omori and Masuda intentionally decided to not put the Battle Frontier inside of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. It's not like there was a weird reason as to why it wouldn't fit in the game or that there wasn't enough time or anything like that. They just thought that people would not like having the Battle Frontier in this day and age. For the Pokemon remakes of the third generation, that included an Emerald kind of chapter with the Delta chapter. So acknowledging pretty much everything about Hoenn, except for the Battle Frontier, which is uh, pretty, pretty interesting. So yeah, let's go and just kind of scroll down a bit, kind of ease up into the interview. But this one's interesting. So in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, we noticed a decrease in difficulty compared to previous games in the series. In the future, is there a feature that will allow you to set the level of difficulty as already happened in Pokemon Black and White? Too. Now, here's the thing about me personally, I kind of covered in this video. I don't consider the difficulty setting in Pokemon Black and White 2 to be a true difficulty setting. That effectively, it makes the game take longer with a bit more grind, and that's kind of it. There isn't any, like, true difficulty behind it in how you kind of break down the story and all the other things they have to navigate throughout the game. So I see it as artificial difficulty that really wouldn't change the experience. Having the difficulty setting for Pokemon Sun and Moon XY would maybe make the games a bit more frustrating, but overall, this is very telling, because this happened in 5th generation. So in an interview, they were talking about why the games, you know, are a bit more predictable, a bit more easy, but with this, we have created a balanced game that is suitable for the times that are happening now. So they, this is how they view the Pokemon fan base. This is how they view people. They've, they've kind of understood that the older Pokemon audience tends to graduate, tends to grow out of Pokemon. So now it's the newer group of kids. It's the younger audience. And with this, they're noticing that they don't want difficulty anymore. That this has kind of been a hot topic in gaming for a long time. Especially, actually, kind of coming up recently with the whole Cuphead thing. That's like, yes, difficulty can exclude people from enjoying games. And no, there is nothing wrong about that. Because you look at some of the older, harder games, there was barely any tutorial you just kind of picked up the game prayed you got decent enough to be able to beat it and there are some very very challenging things out there like the Mega Man series in which everyone is very busy and there are other realities among the young through smartphones and other devices, you can access many games for which the time dedicated to a single game is much lower than the past. The player can decide whether to continue the game after the main story, where the difficulty increases, and there are only coaches and challenges that are much more difficult to deal with. So that is pretty much the idea behind Game Freak, and this is something that I've been okay with, but I'm not okay with how the community has been responding to it because they're interpreting it as a bad game. So right now, the post game is where you find all of your gameplay for Pokemon, but the problem is that is being undercut by all the hacking and cheating going on. And this is also where a lot of Pokemon disagrees, that the people that hack, cheat their game, that just don't really care for the official rules or don't really care for Game Freak, that have really lost the spirit of Pokemon, which is an astonishing amount of the community right now, which is effectively a lot of why I'm doing the channel the way I'm doing it. But because of that, we have a large portion of the Pokemon community that is pretty much kind of against the entirety of Game Freak's design. That, okay, I can maybe disagree with making the storyline easier, that way you can get into competitive sooner. But that's another thing, that people just say like, oh, breeding's so hard, it takes so long, when compared to the fourth generation, breeding is 
dozens and dozens of times quicker than it used to be in 4th generation, 5th generation. It got quicker between X and Y, Omega Bean Alpha Sapphire, got easier even in the 7th generation games and people complained. So what, what this is telling us is that, you know, people will always cry about having to do the most minimal amount of works and even then, they made, they you know, they buffed the Destiny Knot, they made it to where it's easier to get IVs on Pokemon, they made it easier for all this stuff. So by Game Freak acknowledging that they're making the games intentionally easier and shorter, it's also kind of saying that breeding has been made easier as a result of that, but people refuse to accept it. Accept it, so that's a big problem. That the battle tree, finding items, finding TMs, catching the Pokemon that then become available, participating in the post game is where a majority of the Pokemon gameplay has been loaded. That's like, okay, you can either play for the story or you can play for the post game. People refuse to do both right now, so that's been a really big problem for Game Freak. But then we get into something that people just are not happy about at all. Why was the Loda Park not included? And yes, that is still the Battle Frontier. As we can see right here, Parco Loda. So the Loda Park is how it's described in uh, in Italian. So in simple terms, Loda Park was not inserted only because a very small part of the players would have appreciated and used this functionality of the game. Players get tired of the past and are not attracted by these challenging challenges. So, here's where I can actually disagree with Game Freak. Like, I agree with the way that they've been trying to shove everything into the post-game, and then in a world with legitimate play, in a world where we don't have this spoiled, bratty, disrespectful, massive community, where, like, the majority of Pokemon players are hacking the game just because they don't want to engage in the proper gameplay, in a world without that, the post-game is absolutely wonderful. That this is how you can build a community that'd be very strong and very comfortable, but everyone's kind of ruining it. But here's where I can kind of disagree on Game Freak, because they can just keep kind of throwing everything at people and so what if a very small amount of players play it it doesn't really I mean from a gameplay development cap standpoint I don't think the resources would be wasted that with how many people ended up buying I know I think we have like over 10 million copies for Omega Reed Alpha Sapphire that been sold probably close to like 13 million at this point right now it's like an absolutely insane amount it you know it for a remake game slash enhanced version slash like follow-up you know it was almost on par with Pokemon X and Y because people were hyped for the nostalgia players get we're not getting tired of the past you know players get tired of the past well then what's the point of making this enhanced version or what's the point of making a remake because Heart Gold Soul Silver, that game absolutely crushed it. It was a favorite game by many players, and then everyone was waiting for the Generation 3 remakes because of it. They were excited of Gen 2. They were still waiting for Generation 3. We have all these other features as well, because we have the, um, now, now I'm actually, uh, Secret Bases. So we have the Secret Bases. Those made a return. Those didn't really get picked up as much as I thought they would. But yeah, there was actually like a good amount of install base for everyone. So why not just have the battle frontier for the people that want to use it? Even then, I'll talk to people that think cheating is okay in Pokemon, but they would have still loved to see the battle frontier come back because it's challenges, it's fun, it's distraction, but it's also a very engaging Pokemon experience. There's different things that you have to do. It makes you feel like you're in the Pokemon world when you're met with variety. Just kind of having the battle tower, the battle subway, the battle maison, the battle tree, Okay, cool. I have one solo single dimension place. You know, it's just it's just square. It's it's exactly what it's going to be. You go in and you grind battles on complete repetition. But when it comes to the battle frontier, that that variety is actually what keeps people coming back. It doesn't matter if it's an experience that's already been played many times. So I don't really know why Game Freak doesn't feel that people would engage when, with it when there is a where's the, where there's something for everyone. Sure, maybe the entire facility wouldn't be used by every single person, but it would have probably gotten as much usage, if not more. Because as Omega Green Alpha Sapphire came out, like, suddenly along these lines, as like the Gen 3 hype started to build up again, I saw more support for the Battle Frontier than I have since Emerald version. That it seems like, you know, people, this brought back an older audience. And maybe it was fears of the younger audience, that the younger audience is going to be too distracted, that they're not going to have enough attention span to participate in each individual challenge. But I think that's also where Game Freak has fallen off, and that's what was one of the major concerns in my video right here, is that they don't trust Pokemon players. They look at the general populace, they look at what's going on, and then they say this must apply to all Pokemon fans, when Pokemon fans, they're a special, overly dedicated niche. That we're going to buy every game that comes out, even if it turns out to be bad, we're still going to engage with it. We're still going to give it its best shot, and then if it turns out to not be the best game, well, we already purchased it, we already had it, and then it falls off from there. So it's not like there's going to be any 
lowered expectations, or it's not like the game is going to be suppressed before coming out. Every Pokemon game or every new generation has outsold the previous generation because Pokemon keeps growing. So it seems like Game Freak, I don't know what caused them to give up on that. Maybe it is that they were afraid that all of these older Pokemon players were truly done with the series, but really, Pokemon X and Y brought back a lot of older Pokemon players. That was one of the things that really started off my channel, that people were like, oh, I haven't cared about Pokemon since Gen 3, and this guy's making it really easy to get back in. That was kind of one of the awesome things I loved about my channel, but then I stopped seeing that. I didn't see that as much in the 7th generation. I didn't see that much as much in uh, Omega Green Alpha Sapphire, and it seems like that's because Game Freak you know, you, you might have your suspicions. You might think, why is the game designed this way? But then you dig through the interviews for 5th generation, 6th generation, even hints of 7th generation, and it seems like Game Freak feels distrust in their audience, and I can't blame them. When you see how toxic the community has been, how much support for hacking, how much support of bastardizing their games actually exists out there, it is really sad, and then it's just a never-ending cycle at this point. We ruin their games, so they don't give us the best experience because they don't think we want anymore because we're complaining about it, and then that causes us to hack, which shows even more disrespect for the game's developers, which discourages them even more, and then that's going to make them have less faith in us as Pokemon fans, and then the cycle continues. Also, Niantic with Pokemon Go doesn't help. Niantic has really burned a lot of people off Pokemon with their mismanagement and their poor just handling of Pokemon Go, which is actually really sad because that, again, brought back tens of millions of players and also introduced tens of millions of people into Pokemon who would have not otherwise given it a chance. So, if anything, you know, this is kind of why I do what I do. I'm trying to bring as much of the community back together to make everyone love and enjoy Pokemon, but it, it's just, you know, there's so much disrespect, but also, that's why I mean, I think it's the, it's the never-ending cycle. We have to get better so Game Freak respects us again, but no one, that's not going to happen because we have too many people hacking the game. We have too much disrespect towards Pokemon, and we can only hope that Game Freak goes all out. Maybe. Just, maybe they, they snap out of it. They see that, you know, from Generation 6. Hopefully they acknowledge that they screwed up with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That with the massive backlash, like, oh, more people cared about the Battle Frontier than we initially thought. Let's consider, you know, a Battle Frontier-like area for the Nintendo Switch, depending on how large and how grand that game goes. So, kind of, hopefully... Instead of doubling down like we've seen in 5th, 6th, and 7th generations on this new Pokemon experience, they just kind of go back to the old. They go back to the tried and true, and they rebrand it on Nintendo Switch for just amazing power for what this console has brought us. So if you guys in, enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.